Hey everybody, Chris here, and we've got a new pro detective for you today, and I hope you like lists because we're gonna cover the five most important things to remember when using self-clinching fasteners in your design. When it comes to custom sheet metal enclosures and parts, self-clinching fasteners are going to be your best friend for mounting components and hardware. These self-clinching fasteners are the MVP for a few different reasons. For one, they're very cost effective and there are a ton of different fastener types with each suiting specific mounting requirements. But with all of that variety and option, the choices can be really overwhelming. But no worries, we've got you covered with a previous Pro Tech tip that gives you a rundown of all the self-clinching fasteners that we stock at Protocase. But if you're more the reading type, our website has all those details too. So check out the links to both of those places in the description below. And we get it. When you're prototyping or trying to solve a problem, you don't have time to waste going down rabbit holes of technical nonsense or being paralyzed in time with decision making. That's why for today's video, I want to go over five key things to consider when choosing fasteners for your design. Thinking about these five things will help speed up your decision making and make sure that you pick the right fastener for what you need. First up, mounting style. Now there are many different mounting styles available for components that go inside sheet metal enclosures. The first decision that you have to make when choosing a self-clinching fastener is going to be the mounting style. How does the component mount? Does it have pre-existing threaded holes? If so, a simple clearance hole in your enclosure or part, plus a pan or flathead screw would work great. Does it have unthreaded clearance holes? If so, you have a couple more options. You can opt for a standoff if you want your component to be offset from the surface of the enclosure. If using a standoff, you must make sure that there is room to thread a screw in from the mounting side of the component. Or does it make more sense to use a self-clenching stud and have it protrude through the clearance hole? If using this option, you will need to ensure that there is enough space to thread a nut on from the mounting side of the component. Now, you typically would not use nuts to mount your components as you need something that either threads into a portion of your enclosure or something that threads into your component itself. Next up, we have material compatibility. As with any self-clinching fastener, the number one rule to remember is that your fastener should always be harder than the material it's being inserted into. The reason for this is simple. In order for the sheet metal to displace and flow around your fastener as it's press fitted and cold formed into the part, the material that it's being inserted into needs to be softer on the hardness scale. So what if you don't know which fastener material you're using? Well, that's where our website comes in. If you go to the fastener section on our website, linked below, each fastener page has a table of what we stock, which includes a materials not compatible column. If that column is blank for the fastener that you're looking for, check out the description. It will often note what material the fastener needs to be. Now, as a last resort, you can always check with our team or check the Pen Engineering website to look up that specific fastener. Point number three, material thickness. Similar to material compatibility, each fastener is typically rated for a range of thicknesses. It's important to remain within these specified thicknesses for your fastener to function properly. Not following these guidelines can cause increased pressure around the collar of your self-clinching fastener when tightening, which can increase the failure of the fastener. You can find all of this information on our website by clicking the specific fastener part number and check out the minimum sheet thickness section. Next up, we have cutout size. Each self-clinching fastener also requires an accurately sized cutout in order for the fastener to be inserted properly and have the metal displaced the correct way. The main constraint here is you have to worry about having space around your cutout. This follows along with our minimum bend constraints, which is how close a cutout can be to a bend before it stretches. If a fastener cutout is too close to a bend and stretches, it can deform the hole size, causing the fastener to not insert properly. Another thing to watch out for here is proximity of the cutout to the edge. Most fasteners have a center to edge distance that needs to be followed. If breaking this specified distance, it can cause the edge of your part to deform, or even worse, the cutout to fail after it's inserted. You also have to remember that we need to use a series of anvils and punches to insert these fasteners using our PEMSERTER. There must be accurate space around the fasteners to not interfere with the adjacent components. You can also find the minimum distance from an edge information on the specific fastener page. 
Now last but not least, the last constraint to keep an eye out for would be the length of your fastener. This will always be a design dependent situation, so ensure that the component you're installing in your enclosure has an accurate length of fastener to fit it properly. The length of your fastener can always be determined by the last few digits in the part number. It's also worth mentioning that the length of a stud or standoff goes from the base of the fastener to the top. So this does mean that it does include the material thickness of the part that it's being inserted into. So please keep that in mind when designing how your components are going to sit inside your enclosure. So that's it. That's a rundown of constraints and factors to keep in mind when selecting fasteners for your sheet metal design. Now, it's our hope that videos like these take some of the confusion out of designing custom parts and enclosures. Because if you're confused or struggling to make decisions, it's going to be a struggle to get your project to the finish line as quick as possible. We don't like wasting time here at Protocase, and I bet you don't like to either. So revolutionize your workflow and simplify your part sourcing with Protocase to see how fast, flexible, and easy it really can be. Thanks for watching this week's Prototech Tip video, and we'll see you again next time.